Have you ever wondered about the path that electricity takes to get from the utility generators to the receptacle in your home or business? In this video, we will take you on a trip through the utility power system and show you some of the equipment that you will see along the way and show our utility power system here at the Power Systems Experience Center. Utility power systems are complex, interconnected systems with many generation sources connected through long transmission lines. We will show you how the power gets from those long high voltage transmission lines to regional substations and onto local medium voltage distribution systems, eventually ending at the meter in front of your home or business. Let's start here at the substation. Transmitting power long distances is done by stepping the voltage up to high levels. As the voltage is increased, the current can be decreased, reducing losses and reducing the cost of the conductors to transport the power. Once the power is in the general region where it will be utilized, it is stepped down via transformers like this 5 MVA transformer to lower distribution or utilization voltages. In this case, the voltage is stepped down from 34.5 kV to 13.8 kV where it will be distributed with overhead and underground power lines. This transformer has additional features including de-energized tap changers to change the nominal voltage, as well as an internal vacuum breaker to quickly de-energize the system during fault conditions. The internal breaker takes the place of a large and potentially expensive substation breaker. In addition, the transformer contains a visible open and visible ground switch to verify that the transformer is disconnected from the circuit. This liquid-filled transformer uses an optional, environmentally friendly, non-toxic insulating oil called FR3. On each side of the transformer, there are surge arresters. The ones on this side are station class arresters, and the ones on the secondary are called distribution class arresters. They protect the transformer and the connected equipment against lightning and other high voltage transients. Arresters are sized to be well below the BIL, or basic insulation level, of the equipment they protect. Think of them as surge protection, like the surge protectors in your home. In fact, modern surge arresters use the same MOV, or metal oxide varistor, technology that is used in low voltage surge protection, but they are simply larger and rated for more energy dissipation. These discs are actually the MOVs that are inside the arrestors. From the transformer, cables and busway in the form of these aluminum pipes go to voltage regulators. These three single phase regulators regulate the output of the substation transformer with 32 step automatic tap changers that can change the voltage from plus 10% to minus 10%. These regulators are automatically operated but can be remotely controlled via SCADA for voltage compensation or manually with these switches or remote operators. Notice that they are partially rated because they are only 10% of the required load that they serve. From the regulators, these two reclosers feed the two main feeders coming out of this substation. This recloser is called a three-phase recloser because it will clear all three phases during a downstream fault. And this one is called a triple single because it can operate independently on each phase during fault conditions. The 13.8 kV feeders from these two reclosers then feed overhead and underground medium voltage distribution circuits. Back on the 34.5 kV end of the substation, there is a substation capacitor bank. This bank supplies reactive power to compensate for the reactive power required by loads like motors. These capacitor banks are generally used to optimize voltage and power factor for the efficient transmission of power. Utilities decide on overhead or underground power distribution lines based on the reliability and cost constraints. Generally speaking, Overhead lines are inherently less expensive, but are more susceptible to faults from animal and tree contact, lightning, and vehicle accidents. Underground feeders are more reliable, but costly and difficult to repair. Here, we can follow the white LED lights simulating a power distribution line from the substation to this point where it splits and then to the end of the line here. Then it goes underground, under the bridge, and back up to these three individual 
manual isolation switches. Then this way to the end of the line. The blue line goes underground, under the road, and comes back up at this three-phase pole-mounted load brake switch. From here, it wraps around the corner to additional loads. Some of the equipment you will see on these feeders would be typical for utility distribution lines, like these fuse cutouts. This set has load brake capability, which allows linemen to pull them open under load. This set uses current limiting fuses, and this set uses expulsion fuses. Here is a video of the operation of an expulsion fuse during a fault condition. The low cost of the replacement links makes them the choice for many applications. Where clearing of an expulsion fuse could ignite flammable material or gases, for example in a chemical plant, these current limiting fuses will extinguish the fault within the fuse, as you can see in this video. This minimizes the effect by melting the element and turning the sand to glass within the fuse barrel quickly, extinguishing the arc. These do not have replaceable fuse links, so a new fuse is required after each operation. At the end of this line, we see a capacitor rack with its own switches, which can be controlled automatically or manually to support a utility's volt var strategy. Along each of these feeders, we see pole mounted reclosers used to clear temporary faults and to sectionalize the system to minimize the effect of permanent faults, similar to the reclosers in the substation. These are three phase electronically controlled reclosers. This is a single phase electronic recloser, and this one is a single phase hydraulic recloser which is less costly and often used on rural distribution systems. Utility feeder automation systems, often called SCADA systems, tie all of these reclosers and volt var equipment to optimize their systems. Here at the PSEC, you can see how all of this equipment is monitored and controlled in a control room like this. Pad mounted equipment is simply another version of the circuit breakers, switches, transformers, or other utility equipment. This three-phase regulator, for example, is a pad-mounted version of the single-phase liquid-filled regulators we saw in the substation. This section is a special area called a network vault. This is what you would see if you looked under a manhole cover on a busy street in New York, Chicago, or Pittsburgh. Network vaults are essentially concrete bunkers that contain a number of parallel transformers. These transformers are paralleled to give high reliability if one fails, it is removed from the electrical network via these special circuit breakers called network protectors and the power is supplied through the remaining transformers. These heavy duty tanks must be able to withstand excessive fault current as well as significant environmental conditions. From our power distribution system, a medium voltage feeder would supply power to this primary circuit breaker called a VisoVac. From there, it feeds multiple transformers where the voltage is stepped down to 480 or 12208 for utilization in high-rise buildings. With our heavy reliance on electricity and the cost to supply the loads, some customers require backup power for their utility systems and some have taken it to a step further to install a microgrid. So what is a microgrid? Microgrids are standalone electrical systems consisting of multiple generating sources and defined loads that can operate either connected to or independent of the primary utility grid. They provide a reliable, efficient solution to unexpected power loss, effectively balancing variations in energy demand, optimizing energy usage for more reliable power, reducing operating costs and carbon emissions. Here at the PSEC, you can see a fully functional, operational microgrid. This microgrid has four sources and supplies power to four large HVAC units, lights, and auxiliary loads. The four sources include the utility, a 100 kilowatt generator, lithium ion batteries, and solar power. The microgrid seamlessly controls and optimizes the power flow from all four sources and using Eaton's Power Expert Energy Optimizer Controller, it can optimize the system based on reliability or cost as appropriate. The options are almost limitless to make your system work the way you want. Some additional features include power factor optimization, seamless islanding, emission control and frequency regulation or active power dispatch for specific utility markets. Finally, as we approach your home or business, we see the transformers that step the power down to the utilization voltage required by the loads. 
Here we see pole mounted transformers, often banked in sets of three to supply light commercial or industrial three phase loads like strip malls or light manufacturing. These single phase pole mounted transformers are what you would see outside your home. The output of this type of transformer would be 240 volt split phase. From this transformer, you can see how the 240 volt and grounded neutral get to the meter socket on the side of your house and go into the power distribution panel that feeds your home. This is a pad mounted version of the same type of transformer that might supply power to your house or you and a few of your neighbors. For larger commercial or industrial customers, we see these pad mounted transformers. This one, for example, is 500 kVA and would require a small wire like this coming off the distribution line, but then would require two of these conductors inside the building for the 480 volt side. It, it becomes obvious why we don't transmit power very far with low voltage. Depending on the ownership of the transformer and the billing structure, the utility may meter the primary or secondary. At this point, on the secondary of the meter, the electrical system becomes the responsibility of the end user. Utility power systems are often large and complex. Here at the Power Systems Experience Center, you can see utility power distribution equipment in a safe, controlled environment. We can help you design and optimize your distribution system to make it safe, efficient, and reliable. Contact us or your local Eaton representative to schedule a visit to the Power Systems Experience Center today.